PowerShell is Microsoft's answer to developing a more feature-rich command line experience. It's different than CMD, and really it's more of a scripting language, and it uses what's known as commandlets. And these commandlets can perform multiple commands at once and even directly access software development frameworks, along with server tools to administer a full enterprise network. It's pretty powerful as a result, even if the syntax or the vocabulary of the language can be a bit convoluted. So let's jump in and get a sense of how it works. We have PowerShell pinned to the taskbar down there, or you could search for it as well. And if you open it up, it sort of looks like CMD. I'll enter in the command of dollar sign PS version table dot PS version. And I've put in some capitalization here. And honestly, they're not necessary, but it's a bit of a habit that you see with scripting languages and programming in general. And this is called camel case, where it sort of looks like the humps of a camel's back because you're capitalizing the individual words because there are no spaces. And this just makes it easier to read. Okay, so let's actually fire the command and see what it looks like. The formatting of PowerShell commands generally comes out to be very easily manipulated inside of columns and rows and some type of divider along with spaces, and that's a little bit different. And let's look at the actual command that we ran as well too. The dollar sign there that we specified is to indicate that we're referencing what's called an object. And consider that an object is just this virtual piece of data, and it has these things called attributes. And if you wanted to try and relate it to something in real life, think of maybe like vehicles, cars, and bicycles, if you will. Each of these objects have their own sets of attributes, such as color, size, and number of wheels. And that's what we've effectively done over here, is we've referred to this PS version table object, and then that dot indicates that we're going to refer to one of the attributes of that object. And in this case, it will get us the version of PowerShell. And these objects are actually called variables, and they can store different things sort of like temporary storage locations or a bucket that you can fill and then pour out whatever you need and you can put whatever you want inside that bucket. And we'll dive into that later. For now, let's move on and expose you now to what commandlets are. First, we'll run the clear command, which is essentially the same as the CLS command in CMD. Now, let's walk through a command like get-location. You see again, it's formatted into columns. And commandlets, they follow the syntax of verb dash noun. So let's look at get dash child item. Again, get is the verb, and in this case, child item is the noun for all of the items inside of a given folder. So a little bit different, right? Compared to CMD, this is more thinking along the lines of what you want to do, and then the command is basically saying it as opposed to a dir command to show the directory contents versus get child item. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit and then walk through some of this stuff and start working with PowerShell the way that it was intended to. So you can see some of those differences more. Let's run a get dash process. And this shows us all of the processes kind of like task list. And we can start processes in the same way. We can run notepad and that would open it up. So let's see how we would identify the PID. PowerShell by nature is meant to be very specific. So if I pipe that output to a select dash string and I look for notepad as the text, you can see that there's very limited output that it gave back to me. And that's because PowerShell, like I said, really wants you to specify what you're looking for. So instead, let's run that command again of get dash process and we're going to pipe it as well, but we're going to reference the object. Remember, PowerShell works with objects. So we need to use a where dash object commandlet. And this is where it gets a little interesting. We're going to use that dollar sign again to reference the objects in the list that we just saw above. And the way we do that is with a dollar sign underscore. And that just means the given object at a given time when it's going through the output. And then we'll specify the attribute of process name where it's equal, so dash EQ of notepad and then wrap it in little curly braces. So you can see, right, like when you specify with PowerShell, you do get really good output and things to work with, but getting there is not really intuitive and it, it does have a bit of a learning curve when you're first getting started. So now we can run a commandlet of stop dash process. And then again, we need to specify it. 
with the process ID, so dash ID, and in this case, 4476, and it's gone. So that's the very PowerShell way of doing something. So I'm going to clear the screen now with the shortcut of Control plus L that acts like clear, and I'll run the git process command lit again. But notice when I hit the PR keys and I start hitting tab, I can cycle through other commandlets as well. And if I wanted to go backwards, shift tab would take me back. So just in case you get lost with your tab auto completion. Then I'll use the out dash file commandlet. And what we'll do is we'll specify the file path of our current directory with the dot backslash and write it out to processes.txt. Now let's open up that file in Notepad and see what it looks like. Cool. So you can see the formatting's great, right? We can get this really fancy process list just by using some of those commandlets together and then save it as a file for later. Okay, so let's walk through creating files and folders. Now we can use another commandlet of new dash item, specify the path, and we'll reference again our local directory where we're at with the dot backslash, and we'll call it test folder, and we need to specify an item type. We'll make a directory here and that's specified with dash item type. All right, so we made a directory. Again, a pretty long chain of commands, but it does have that extra layer of specificity for other needs. Cool, so let's go and CD inside of test folder and do some more commands to work with files. And we can use those CMD commands that we've used before, and that all works by a thing called aliases. And we'll check that out a little bit later. So we can go and echo something inside of a file and work with files as well too. So we'll echo in some data into a hello.txt file, and then we can cd dot dot to go back up one level and go into the previous directory. And then we can run ls, which is kind of like dir and get child item. It's another alias, and we can get the same results of those at a quicker command. And now we can use cp for copying the hello.txt file to our current local directory with the dot backslash. And I'll note really quickly that the cp and ls and other commands, those are commands we use inside of bash, which we'll use a lot inside of Linux. And that will be a whole other take on the command line. So let's delete that file now, and then let's walk through how we would copy it back to our local location as well too, but with PowerShell language. We could do something like copy dash item, specify the path, and we'll reference the test folder, hello.txt, and then we need a destination, which we can again point with dot backslash for our local directory. And then we can run a get child item, and that would show our directory listing. So that's kind of like the CP and LS command side by side. So let's look at another commandlet now that has a level of interactivity with it. If we did the rename dash item commandlet, and then we specified the path towards hello.txt, so our local file here, it'll give us this little prompt that we have to provide a value for for the new name. And that's some of the benefits of working with commandlets is that the experience can be more rich and you can create an experience like this for a user. All right, so now let's check out two more aliases here, one of which is rm for removing files. So we can run the rm command against the sumname.txt file. And then we can run an ls command to verify the file is deleted. And then we can go run the rmdir alias, which is for remove directory. And let's go ahead and remove the test folder directory with that alias. Now notice that it gives us another big prompt for us to consider what to do. And this is because there's something inside of it. There are children, there are child items inside of the folder. So we could specify yes to delete the folder. Cool. Okay, let's actually look at all these aliases with the git dash aliases commandlet. There are quite a few. You can see there are a lot of different ways to run the same type of commandlet. Now, we can actually go and save that as a file that we could use as a little cheat sheet for whenever we need. So I'm going to run the git dash alias commandlet and pipe it out to a file, but I'm going to cause an error here on purpose. I want you to see what that looks like inside of PowerShell. So whenever you see this big string of red text, there's an error. And PowerShell makes this really verbose error statement. And if you look at it more specifically, it tells you exactly what the error is and where it is on your command. 
it's telling us here that a parameter cannot be found that matches the parameter of name. So that's wrong. And more specifically, at character 22, so if you count 22 characters in, including spaces, you're going to end up exactly where the dash name is. So let's say we do a little bit of documentation lookup, we come back to our command, and we're going to run it properly this time. And what we need is dash file path, not dash name. So let's go ahead and put this alias list into a file, and then let's open it up inside of Notepad. And there's quite a few listings over here. So if we kind of scroll through them, you can see that a lot of these aliases exist from other shell languages like bash that we'll see inside of Linux. In fact, we can see that CD is just mapped to set location, which is a little bit easier. Clear is mapped to clear dash host. And if we look through this a little bit more, we can find some other ones that we might have been exposed to at this point, maybe like the ls command for get child item, which I prefer. I think that's a little bit easier. There's man for the help command. There's a lot. So as we get more exposed inside of bash, all those bash commands inside of Linux that we'll do in that module, you'll see we can actually map those over to Windows. Okay, and finally, the last thing I want to show about PowerShell is remember that it's a scripting language. So the power in it comes in scripting and it actually has this feature called the ISE. And to get there, we can right click on where PowerShell is pinned on the taskbar and we can run this as administrator so that we have full permissions. Right click it, run ISE as administrator. So the ISE is an integrated scripting environment. It's a graphical way of building your scripts out in real time. And so I actually have a little script here that I'm going to paste in because there's a lot to type at once, but feel free to pause and then type it out yourself so you can mimic the behavior. And this is a create user script. And this is one of the nice things about the language is that we could build out this very extensive set of commands and use things like objects, attributes, variables, and other fancy things that we'll learn a lot about later to do a bunch of things at once and do what we like to call automation. So in terms of this script over here, this is a user creation script. And what it does is that it creates a couple variables to declare things like the username and password, and then it runs commands to just automate it all at once. And then finally, it'll list out the username. Now the ISE does load a little slow, but when it finally does, you can see this right hand pane over here appear and you can actually see all of the commandlets available for you. That's kind of nice. So you can do some research, you can do some testing and figure out what you want to do and build out this script step by step. Now, the best part is I can select run right there at the top and I can run my script in this little environment and test it out and make sure it's all working. And I can interact, it's a PowerShell process. I can run net users now and you can see it added the power user to the list of user accounts. Very cool. So all said and done, you can see PowerShell is actually pretty powerful and the scripting features and components of it for direct access to Windows and even more advanced things in the future once you get into it of software and server management, it can just do so much at once. But there is a bit of a steep learning curve initially with the syntax, right? That vocabulary that I mentioned of understanding how you want to translate those ideas in your head into PowerShell commands. But thankfully, there's Google. <laughs> and thankfully, there is the ISE and good communities where people can help and support you. But for all intents and purposes, this lab is just to generally expose you to the shell language of PowerShell itself and let you see how it sort of works under the hood.